So thanks for having the opportunity to talk to you a little bit about BGFS. I think uh, a couple of you have heard about the product or using it or having it tested it already. But I also believe that a lot of you haven't really touched on the product or haven't heard a lot about this. So um, after we have seen and heard about three different presentations and how to shuffle data through the life cycle of data, um, I would like to focus a little bit back on how ingesting the data and how to process data on a file system layer. So BGFS is a parallel file system. Um, and it was originally developed at Fraunhofer Research Institute back in Germany, where they had a look into different file system options, uh, which were on the market at this point in time. Um, specifically, one key element was driving them for developing their own file system at this point in time, since it was having small files and large files within the single namespace and performing very well from small to large files, from small file system to large file system deployments. And this was originally coming from the oil and gas industry where they had a tremendous mixture of data sets. And uh, that's where they figured out that nothing in the market is really best enough for getting good performance out of the box. So ThinkPark is a spin-off of Fraunhofer. Uh, we are on the market since five years. We are more in international markets outside of Europe where we are headquartered um, since year and a half approximately. So we have quite a number of traction in the US, Canada, but also in the APEC region. And I will give you at the end of the presentation also a couple of customer examples to see how it is used and who is, it, who is using it. So, um, we are still a very techy company, um, and we try really to focus on a couple of key elements, uh, which we, we will see in the next slide. Uh, I'm not keen managing this company and making a big product, super complex product, but losing on some of the key elements which are essential for us, especially in the HPC community. Um, we have been awarded uh, at the last supercomputing uh, from HPC Wire. Um, which was a little bit uh, a surprise for us, but we are pretty proud about that this got really recognized in the market. Um, so we try to keep going. And um, I mean, as a German company, we try to have a robust and stable product. I mean, that is one of the key focus areas, but we also drive into uh, different other areas. So very high level overview, and we have seen too many slides in the last two days, so I do not have that many slides, but I will stay for a while on a slide. Um, so for us, some key elements, and that is not just marketing, it is performance, it is scalability, ease of use, and the robustness of the entire parallel file system. So if we go into performance, I mean, I've mentioned already scaling it really from small into large files. This is important to us. Uh, scalability means small file system to large file system, but also number of files, which counts into where metadata performance becomes super critical. Uh, ease of use, I mean, I cannot really describe it, but everybody who has touched on the product, installed it, compared, it, compared BGFS to other products uh, in the same arena, I mean, it is super simple to deploy, but it is also super simple to maintain. Um, which has a big advantage for administrators since it, you don't need to be super professional on the product. It is really straight out of the box, rolling it out, installing it. Even in larger deployments, it just takes a couple of hours. You don't need to go through a full training class. It is quite self-explaining. And robustness, um, I mean, nothing to say here. We have implemented a couple of HA solutions around this uh, for certain areas. So if we look a little bit into the product, um, we come from the compute side with the client service, uh, which is a kernel-based uh, implementation here for the BGFS file system. Then we have a metadata service, uh, and we have the storage service over here. Um, it is important to understand that this can run in a complete converged setup. So if someone really has a smaller deployment, they can run all these services on a handful of um, compute nodes, and that's it even all the storage services, metadata services. If you really want to scale it from a small deployment into a larger one, I mean, why not to add more metadata services? Why not to add more storage services? And we will make sure that data, metadata, as well as the data chunks are spread across the additional hardware you're putting underneath, which also gives a nice and uh, smart way in going, for example, from a little bit 
HDD approach into a more freshened SSD or NVMe approach, which, uh, where you can really select on which kind of data falls into which bucket. Uh, but it is also a smart way where you can, for example, eliminate some sort of storage server over time. And we make sure that those data get spread across the rest of the infrastructure you have. So you can silently go from a, a age deployment into a more modern deployment if you have the funding, adding new hardware underneath. So that's a way on how to migrate all the data. And I believe that was not really a key point here in the previous presentation. I mean, migration of data, especially through the life cycle of data, becomes super important. And if you have huge amounts of data today, managing petabytes, I mean, how to migrate those data over time? Um, we have seen many customers in larger deployments spending 50% of their whole I.O. performance just on migration. Yeah. So um, that is really com uh, important, in my opinion, if you deploy a solution, especially a long-term solution, on how to keep data up to date on a newest technology and uh, make sure you can access those data all the time. So uh, we have gateways also into the cloud. Um, and or it's not just cloud. I mean, it is third-party products like HSMs, like cloud, where you can move data in and out transparently to the file system, which gives really a smart capability. But we are not a policy-driven engine in here, uh, in, in complex. So IROD's presentation was a good one. That is where we try to leverage with those kind of external tools in giving all the policy capabilities um, to the end user, rather than developing everything on our own since we want to focus on performance and parallel file system, that's it. Um, if we look a little bit in you, how to use BGFS also in a different aspect, and it is the same BGFS as I have described before. BGFS is a parallel file system, is a parallel file system, is a parallel file system. Running on storage server dedicated, running on metadata dedicated for just providing the capacity and the throughput and the number of IOPS you have specified. So, using BGFS on the compute node in addition, same procedure, just a single line to fire up a temporary file system, what we are calling BGFS on demand, using the same technology where you leverage storage capacity you still have in compute you probably have never used before. And think about you are not just having 10 or 20 or 30 different compute nodes. Think about having hundreds or thousands of compute nodes, having an SSD or NVMe, NVMe device in you haven't used before. That is a perfect way for leveraging for specific tasks, for specific jobs, a parallel file system on compute nodes. And um, running this also with um, policy engines, where you have an epilogue or prologue uh, way of um, enabling this. That is a perfect way, set up a scratch file system out of the job scheduler, run a job, remove the file system like a scratch file system, run the next job, make sure that the data gets into a parallel file system underneath. And if I have showcased here the BGFS file system underneath, yes, that is the best way, but it can also be any other parallel file system underneath. Yeah? So that is a very smart way uh, we have uh, in the field since a couple of years. We have customers just running on Beyond, um, but we also have customers running the full stack, uh, just taking advantage also of the compute nodes. The downside, also to be transparent, is we need IOPS, we need CPU cycles from the compute node. It's not massive, but if you have high, heavy um, applications running on the compute nodes, you probably bypass this number of compute nodes and just leverage this on the other half of the compute nodes you have running not 100% utilization. Good. Um, some facts about BGFS. Um, BGFS, and I start in the middle, is an open source project. And it is publicly available, so everybody can use, open, or can use BGFS as they want. Um, we have a couple of features uh, where we are requesting to sign up a uh, maintenance contract for the software. It's all about storage pools. It's all about um, high availability, quota, and ACLs. Um, anybody else can use it as they want, but of course also users just running on the open source stack can sign up a um, maintenance contract, which means you get the professional support instead of community support uh, for the product. Um, we try to be 
super independent from hardware layers underneath. So we are quite keen on any CPU which is on the market, any storage technology which is on the market, as long as you provide us a device level, uh, we can map it into BGFS. We are independent on the uh, infrastructure layer, on the network layer uh, with BGFS, which is also an interesting way of uh, implementing it. And of course, last but not least, you can reshare the file system for, I would say, lower bandwidth requirements and clients via NFS or SIFs, if that is a requirement in your workflow. And we have quite a high number of customers running on a mixture of having uh, high performance clients directly connected to the parallel file system, but resharing the file system also from some lower performing clients uh, underneath. Good. Um, Going a little bit into use cases, um, it was mentioned before, so I will not drive too much about this. Uh, CSIRO is an Australian company. They have all NVMe running BGFS on top of, which was a bit of learning for us also on how to utilize and um, take best out of the NVMe deployment. It's a quite large deployment. Uh, they have published some numbers to the IO500, uh, which will be uh, publicly seen by, um, or in front of ISC, uh, in back in, or forward looking in June in Frankfurt. So um, I'm pretty excited on the numbers we have seen there. But of course, there are always different systems in the market and the time is running very quickly. So I'm excited that we have it. It runs now, they are putting it in production uh, step by step, which is really a very serious approach and not running too fast and deploying it. They really wanted to get best out of the technology underneath. Uh, that's what we have proven. That is where we have worked closely with them and also with Dell EMC together in making best out of the entire solution here in the market. Another interesting example, um, out of Germany, um, you may don't know this research institute, but it is a quite uh, larger one, uh, Alfred Wegener Institute, and they are very much focused on marine research, also in the polar circle. So they have an actual mission which was in the press. I don't know how much it was in the press here in the US, but they have an icebreaker drifting through the ice in the whole winter time with a lot of scientifics on, on the boat uh, doing a lot of different kinds of studies um, during the ice drift. So that is, from a researcher perspective, I think a quite interesting project. The technology they're using underneath, and that also showcases a little bit the challenge we are facing today is, I mean, on the polar or on the icebreaker, they probably do not have really high bandwidth back to the main data center. So how to transfer all the data from the icebreaker back to the main data center? And the main data center looks a little bit like this. So they have a cray, and I will not go through the all, all the details, but it is not a super large one, but it is a super performant one, um, running BGFS as a general purpose file system uh, underneath. But they also leverage on um, those 316 compute nodes they are running beyond on top of. And that gives them an, an additional performance boost for specific tasks, for specific jobs. Uh, and again, I mean, that is an additional performance burst buffer they can utilize for specific jobs, not for general purpose. Once those jobs are done, they are putting it on the general purpose file system underneath. And of course, they also want to archive all the data at the end of the day, but that is not what BGFS is providing. We focus on performance. We uh, focus really on getting a parallel file system in the market, which supports the community. With that, I'm pretty much done. Uh, thanks for your time. I'm open for questions. Feel free. I'm sorry, just to go back to your second previous slide. So you've got an ocean-bound ship collecting data, and the transfer mechanism was to put it on, on your system to ship it back to Big Compute, or how, how does that so happen? Big Compute is located in Hamburg, city of Hamburg. Um, so the, they, I mean, since they are flying in and out scientif scientifics all the time, it's a quite analog way of getting all the uh, research data back in the main data center for processing. It's a physical transport, yeah. There's no uplink on a bandwidth which makes sense, and it's also a question of cost. 